Hello and welcome to another presentation for uh, GitHubscon Europe. So my name is Kostis. I'm a developer advocate at the CodePress. I'm also working a lot with Argo CD and Argo Louds. Uh, CodePress is, if you're not familiar with us, is an enterprise solution for software delivery. It is powered by Argo CD and offers all the features that you would expect from a modern enterprise solution. The last thing that we released is support for environments. You can see on the screenshot because many people adopt Argo CD and they ask, how do I model my environments and how do I promote applications between them? So if this is something interesting to you, uh, check us out. So today we're going to talk about uh, GitOps for applications, which is a, is a topic that should be familiar to everybody. And then we're going to extend it to GitOps to infrastructure, which is something that is not familiar to everybody. And we're also going to talk about a bit about uh, Terraform and GitOps and have a demo at the end. So just to get uh, everybody on the same page, um, this is Argo CD, if you've never seen it before, it's a GitOps controller. And by default, out of the box, it works with Kubernetes applications. Here I have deployed the Kubernetes application. It's healthy, it's synced. So Argo CD says to me that what I have in Git is also in the cluster. And you can see I can um, get an overview of all the individual components of the application, like the pods and the services. And this is great because I get all the benefits of um, GitOps. So one of the best advantages, if you ask me, uh, is uh, avoiding drift detection. So normally, you know, when you change something in Git or in the cluster, you want to know about it. So Argo CD notifies you and says, hey, now your, thing, your uh, manifest is not synced to the cluster. You made the change. And then you can make a decision and say, okay, I like this change, so I will commit it to Git, or no, somebody did this change uh, manually, and I don't like it, and I will overwrite it. So you get always the guarantee that what we have in Git is also uh, in the cluster. So this is great, and people like Argo CD or Flux. Whenever I say Argo CD, you could also imagine Flux. But then people ask, okay, that's great for Kubernetes, but what about things outside of Kubernetes. So typically an application would have like a database or a queue or a nested bucket for storage. How do you handle these things? Uh, Argo CD and Flux out of the box do not have any uh, support for all these things. So what people usually do, um, they use say, okay, Argo CD is nice. I will keep it for Kubernetes only. So I will use GitOps on in Kubernetes, and then I will have something else for my infrastructure. And usually companies have a huge investment on Terraform or other tools like Pulumi or Ansible or the classics like Seth and Puppet, and they use that for infrastructure. And when I say infrastructure, I also um, include the clusters themselves. So now we have two different worlds. On one side, we have the things for applications, and they are to produce Argos DN Flux. So it's Kubernetes native, it's fully GitOps, uh, and those tools always give you the guarantee that what you have in Git is also uh, in the cluster. You get all the other benefits of GitOps, as is the other thing. And then there is the second world of infrastructure, which is not handled by uh, Kubernetes. You create their infra either when you call uh, the Terraform CLI or you run a job or a tasks. And there, unless you do something magic, by default, you also suffer from configuration uh, drift, which is the thing I explained before. Uh, how, how do you create infrastructure and applications? Again, for Kubernetes, you always work with uh, YAML. This is what uh, Kubernetes is based on. But then for uh, infra, you use something else. So if you use Terraform, you use HCL. So you have different languages to, to learn and become an expert. And you can see in all the slides here, I have a big barrier the, the center that shows the difference between the two uh, words. So let's talk a bit about uh, Terraform. I'm saying Terraform because most companies are familiar with it and also a lot of people are happy with Terraform and they say, okay, I'm pulling GitOps everywhere. Uh, just a huge disclaimer, I love Terraform. Terraform is a great tool, that's great. So on the next slides, I will not, let's say, attack Terraform, don't take me wrong. I will just explain why Terraform is not following uh, GitOps. Terraform is a, is a great tool. Now, if you don't exactly know what makes a tool uh, GitOps, by this point in time, you should uh, know about the GitOps principles. They are over there at opengitops.dev. Uh, this is the page of the working group, the GitOps working group. You can see CodePress there um, is one of the founding members and also WeWorks and the main company behind Flux. So it's not the Argo City principles or the Flux principles, it's the GitOps, the GitOps principles. 
and everybody agrees on them. And then if you look at the principles, uh, they are those four. First, the system that uses a declarative format for describing your input or your application. Uh, you should use a version and immutable storage for your description. Uh, you should have a software agent that pulls automatically all this information. And also you should continuously reconcile the infor this information so that you get the guarantee that what you have in storage, usually in Git, is also the same thing that you have in your infra. So these are the principles that the tool must follow in order to say that, hey, I'm following GitOps by the book. And if you have worked with Terraform, only the first principle is covered. Yes, Terraform is using HCL, which is a declarative language where you describe how your infrastructure should look. That's fine, but all the other principles are not followed. Uh, Terraform is using Git, but this is only for storing the files, like the HCL files. For state, Terraform has its own state, and we're actually going to talk about it, and it's not in Git. Uh, by default, Terraform is just a CLI, so it's not an agent that you install somewhere and pull this information. You have to run it either manually or from a CI system. And also, again, by default, Terraform doesn't have any continuous reconciliation. So you run Terraform, it does something, and then it finishes its job and it stays there. If you do a change manually in your infrastructure, Terraform doesn't know anything about it. So out of those four principles, only the first one is followed by Terraform. Now, I want to talk specifically about the second one regarding state. If you are working with Terraform, Terraform has its own state, which is usually stored uh, in an S3 bucket or in console or in some other backend. And Git is just the original storage of the Terraform files. But the source of truth, the thing that Terraform's, Terraform looks in order to decide if something exists or not, is its own state. The state can be manipulated manually, which goes against the second principle that says that state should be uh, immutable. And also by default, Terraform doesn't do anything with the state until the next run. So you run Terraform once, let's say it creates a virtual machine, it stores it in the state, then you delete manually that VM, and Terraform doesn't know anything about it. So the next time Terraform runs, it will detect and say, oh, I have a VM in my state, but this VM doesn't exist, uh, what do I do? So at any point in time, you don't really have the guarantee that what this described in Git is also in Terraform state object. And I think the best, um, Let's say example to showcase this is the second principle. If you remember, the second principle said that the state should be stored in an immutable storage medium and it should be versioned, which works great for Git, but Terraform has its own state and there is even a Terraform state command where you can remove stuff from the state. So it's not really immutable anymore. So Terraform uses Git for storage, but not as a source of truth. And I can... Uh, guarantee that you know if you have worked with Terraform in a, uh, in a big company, you would have your own horror story about Terraform. This is one of my favorite ones for uh, Spotify. If you set Terraform as uh, state Spotify, you will find the video where somebody from Spotify explains how they destroyed uh, two thirds of um, Spotify production because they misunderstood or misused Terraform state. So that's the end of Terraform. Again, as a reminder, I love Terraform. It's a great tool, but it's not GitOps, especially when there are other better uh, solutions. And we can do better for GitOps. There is something uh, better. Ideally, we would like to have a tool that is native to Kubernetes. So not just a CLI like Terraform or Puppet or something else. It should be a native Kubernetes controller. It should use this sync loop like Argo should be in Flux, where it stays within the cluster. And then it always looks at what is in at the resources that are in Git and then applies them. And it should give us the constant guarantee that what we have in Git is also in the external resources. So if we had that magic tool, we could extend Argo CD to also work with infrastructure and not just Kubernetes applications. Because this is what we want to do. We want to take Argo CD to the next uh, level. So if we do that, then we would have one single word, so we would have YAML manifests for our applications, and we will also have YAML manifests for infrastructure, removing completely the barrier between these two words and having like a unified approach uh, to everything. So what we want, we want to apply GitOps everywhere. We want to use the Kubernetes API as a central place for everything, and we want to get all the good benefits of GitOps and apply them to infrastructure as well. So things such as you know, drift detection, uh, common tooling and universal workflows, they should be a common part for everything and not just Kubernetes applications. 
So this thing exists today. This is Crossplane. If you have never seen Crossplane before, you should definitely uh, check it out. This presentation is not about Crossplane, so I will uh, talk a bit about it. But um, Crossplane is the tool that essentially uh, embodies all the principles I talked before. So it allows you to create Kubernetes manifests. It comes with its own CRDs that represent infrastructure, infrastructure out of the Kubernetes cluster. So here I have an example with a bucket. And this is for um, Amazon, but there are similar providers for uh, Google, for AWS, for other cloud providers. And of course, you can create uh, your own. And all the things that you have in your infra can be described. So here are some additional examples for uh, an RDS instance and a subnet. And you can have things for virtual machines and stuff like that. So once you have this manifest, you can use the same Kubernetes tool that you already have, such as um, Argo CD. So this is how it works. I have a Kubernetes cluster. I have installed the Argo CD, like always. And I've also installed Crossplane. So Crossplane now has installed in the cluster its custom uh, resources, which represent the infrastructure, these YAML files. So I can apply them with Argo CD. And once applied, Crossplane will create the infrastructure for me outside the cluster. So I have a manifest that describes a virtual machine. I apply it with Argo CD, and then Argo CD via Crossplane will create a virtual machine outside the cluster. And this is how I can manage infrastructure um, using GitOps. So imagine this is my Argo CD dashboard, and these are Argo CD applications. But in this case, they are not Kubernetes applications. They are infrastructure outside of the cluster. So here I have an S3 bucket. We will also see this uh, in the demo. And I still use Argo CD like uh, I'm used to, to work with applications. You can also do something even more, let's say, uh, fancy. Uh, remember that the Kubernetes cluster itself is infrastructure, and you can also describe it with Crossplane as well. So you could have a scenario where a developer comes to you and says, I need a new application and a brand new Kubernetes cluster. And you could create Crossplane first to create the target cluster. And then after you create the cluster, you use standard Argo CD resources to deploy applications on the cluster that you just created. So in the end, you have a single Git repository or two Git repositories that doesn't really matter, where operators work on manifests that describe the cluster, and then developers work on manifests that describe the applications that are running on the cluster. So everything in a single um, workflow, everything with a common way of uh, working both with infrastructure and applications. OK, so enough about uh, the theory. Let's see uh, a demo. So here, uh, I already have my Argo CD instance, and I've already installed um, Crossplane. So I can show a quick example where this is like the standard uh, Kubernetes application. This is actually one of the examples for Argo CD. You can see it's just the usual stuff like a deployment, a pod, and services, basic stuff. But I also have here another application, which I'm calling Infra. And let's say it's the infrastructure that this application needs. So in this case, if I go and look at the resources, this one is a, a DB instance. So it's an RDS uh, instance. So this box describes infrastructure. And this is an S bucket, because my application needs uh, these two things. And if I also go uh, to my Amazon uh, console, you can see this is a database that was created. It's already here. And here I have the, um, the buckets. This is the bucket that is described my application. So I can also you know, verify that my infrastructure is there. OK, so that's uh, that's great for an existing application. I also want to show you like a quick demo how it is how easy it is to create new infra. And just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use the Argo CD UI, which is something that you should normally not do. You should use uh, manifests, but that's OK for this demo. So I'm going to deploy just a very uh, simple manifest, which is, again, uh, an S3 bucket. So you see, I tell to Argo CD, go to this repository and apply whatever is in this uh, folder. And if I look at uh, this folder, it is just an S3 bucket with a name uh, that includes a GitOps con uh, super simple. Crossplane is much more advanced. So it starts uh, as out of sync. And then as soon as I sync it, Argo CD deploys the manifest. And because this manifest is a crossplane manifest, crossplane will take over and say, OK, what? This described here, we have an S3 bucket. And then it will create the S3 bucket. So this is finished. You see it's healthy, it's sync. And then I can go 
and to my S3 buckets. And if I refresh, you see the uh, GitHub Scon demo that was just uh, created. So this is how easy it is to create uh, infrastructure. So that was for the um, uh, demo. And as I said, you know, Crossplane has other uh, capabilities. You can also define your own compositions and group stuff. But as I said, this presentation is not about Crossplane. Here is also another tool that takes the same approach. This is something I discovered uh, recently. This is uh, Atlas. It's a Kubernetes controller that describes database migrations. So this is a custom resort resource, which if you look at it, describes a database migration for MySQL. And as you can imagine, I can take this file and apply it with Argo CD or any other GitOps tool, and then handle um, database migrations with GitOps. So now I have the whole uh, Trinity. You have Argo CD, which out of the box supports only Kubernetes uh, resources. Codefresh is the enterprise version. Then you have Crossplane that creates uh, infrastructure for you. And Upbound is the uh, company behind Crossplane, and they also have a commercial company. And then you can also explore other tools such as Atlas, which is the one I talked about that has uh, database migrations. So you're using GitOps everywhere. Like you create clusters, you create databases, you migrate databases, you deploy applications all with GitOps, because this is what we want in the end. We want all the benefits of GitOps, uh, like uh, using the Kubernetes API, having a unified way of describing uh, resources in declarative format, using Git as uh, the source of truth, avoiding configuration uh, drift and implementing common workflows. We want all these benefits to apply it everywhere and not just on Kubernetes applications. So even though you know some people think that GitOps applies only to Kubernetes and only to Kubernetes applications, you can use GitOps outside of Kubernetes and also combine it with other tools that allow you to use GitOps for uh, infrastructure and other stuff. So sets all the GitOps tools that exist apart from uh, Kubernetes. So that's it. These are the tools that we are talked about. This is my email if you have any uh, questions. Thank you.